Good morning. The Secretary General and the Prime Minister will deliver short remarks and then we'll have time for a few questions. Secretary General. Prime Minister Christensen, uh, dear Ulf, uh, it is an honor to welcome you today to the NATO headquarters because this is truly an historic day. In a few moments, uh, we will raise the Swedish flag here at the NATO headquarters and all over the alliance and welcome your country as the 32nd member of NATO. Sweden has uh, taken its rightful place at uh, NATO's table under the shield of Article 5 uh, uh, protection, the ultimate guarantee of our freedom and security. All for one and one for all. Joining NATO is good for Sweden. Good for the stability in the north and good for the security of our whole alliance. Sweden has long been a partner. Now you are 
an ally, with all the benefits and responsibilities that this brings. Sweden has cutting-edge capabilities, first-class armed forces and defence industry, and spends more than 2% of GDP on defence. As we speak, Swedish troops are taking part in Steadfast Defender, NATO's biggest military exercise since the Cold War, a demonstration of our unity and our resolve. In response to Russia's war aggression against Ukraine, NATO has substantially increased our presence in the, across the alliance, and Sweden's membership enhances this even further. When President Putin launched his full-scale invasion two years ago, he wanted less NATO and more control over his neighbours. He wanted to destroy Ukraine as a sovereign state. But he failed. NATO is bigger and stronger. Ukraine is closer to NATO membership than ever before. And as the brave Ukrainian continues to fight for the freedom, we stand by their side. Allies continue to announce billions of dollars in new aid, including Sweden's largest package yet, covering ammunition, air defences and combat boats. Our support to Ukraine saves lives, and it must continue. President Putin started this war, and he could end it today. But Ukraine does not have this option. Surrender is not peace. We must continue to strengthen Ukraine, to show President Putin that he will not get what he wants on the battlefield, but must sit down and negotiate a solution where Ukraine is recognized and prevails as a sovereign independent nation. So, Prime Minister Christensen, thank you for your personal leadership. Broad support across the political spectrum in Sweden has made this day possible. After more than 200 years of neutrality, you are joining the strongest and most successful military alliance in history. So, welcome to NATO. It's great to have you here. Thank you so much, Secretary General, dear Jens. Thanks for welcoming us here today in, in many senses. Sweden is now part of NATO. We are a proud member together with our closest friends and partners. But first of all, Jens, I have to say thank you so much for doing this journey with us and for us. I have highly valued our close cooperation actually from our very first meeting at Folkoforsvar, as we say in Swedish, the security conference in Salem back in 2018 over many meetings and phone calls leading us here today. Without your tireless support and personal commitment, we wouldn't be here. I realize that you would have made the same effort for any qualified country applying for membership, but if you wanted us to feel that we were special, to you, you really did succeed. Thanks also to all NATO allies who have supported our accession and welcoming Sweden as the 32nd member of the alliance. We are humble, but we are also proud. We know the expectations for Sweden are high, but we also have high expectations for ourselves. The Swedish flag will raise here at the NATO headquarters today with a very strong support in our parliament and among our people. An important symbol for this is the fact that the Swedish delegation today consists not only by cabinet ministers and the commander-in-chief, but also by Her Royal Highness the Swedish Crown Princess Victoria and altogether six party leaders. In a vibrant democracy, we argue and we debate, but we unite in the long-term protection of this precious democracy. Unity and solidarity will be Sweden's guiding lights as a NATO member. We will share burdens, responsibilities and risks with our allies. The security situation in our region has not been this serious since the Second World War, 
and Russia will stay a threat to Euro-Atlantic security for a foreseeable future. It was in this light Sweden applied to join the NATO Defense Alliance to gain security, but also to provide security. Our support to Ukraine is a fundamental part of that. Ukraine is fighting bravely for its own freedom, but also defending European freedom. In Sweden, we like to say and think we have unique military capabilities to contribute on land, in the air, and at sea. We are strengthening our defense, and we are doubling the defense budget. From now on, Sweden meets the NATO standard of 2% of GDP to defense spendings. We have been prepared, honestly, for this task for quite a while. In reality, for the last 30 years, but more in details, the last two years. I am very pleased we have taken this final step today. Our country has long been a strong voice for international law, human rights, democracy and freedom at home and abroad. With the Swedish flag being raised here today, we are clearly saying that we stand shoulder to shoulder in defending democracy and freedom together. We have come home, home to the Alliance for Peace and Freedom, to which so many democracies already belong, home to where we also belong. Now we are entering a new era. We will transform from following NATO to being NATO. I do look forward to this important task. Thank you so much. Time for some questions. We'll start with Swedish radio here in the middle, please. Thank you very much, Sandri Astridian on Swedish Radio. Um, you have said over and over again that this has been a quick process, but still it's taken more time and been more difficult than most people expected. So I would like to ask you to be a bit more personal, maybe, if you can share your emotions. How does it really feel now to finally see the Swedish flag here at NATO headquarters? This is a great day, uh, and an historic day. It, uh, it's important for Sweden, it's important for NATO, but it's also important for me uh, personally, uh, because uh, the Prime Minister is right that uh, Sweden is special for me. Partly because Sweden for so many years has been such a close partner, but also because as a Norwegian, of course, I'm a neighbour and I have followed Sweden closely for many, many years. And uh, when I started as uh, Secretary, of, uh, Secretary General of NATO back in 2014, um, I was aware that uh, some countries in Europe were applying for membership, countries like Montenegro and North Macedonia, and I'm very honoured to be the Secretary General that has facilitated the, the membership for these two countries. But I didn't expect uh, at all that uh, Finland and Sweden was going to be a member uh, during my tenure as Secretary General uh, of NATO. And then, of course, this uh, changed totally with the full-scale invasion of Ukraine. And uh, since then, uh, things really moved very quickly. I also rem remember uh, I talked with um, uh, Ulf Kristersson, he was then the uh, in opposition at this Folke uh, conference and I started to talk to other uh, Nordic, uh, uh, so Swedish and Finnish politicians about the possibility of uh, applying for membership and then the decisions were taken and we had very broad support from uh, uh, the, the whole political spectrum both in Finland and Sweden that made this, impossible, uh, made this possible and this is of course great uh, and it demonstrates also that NATO's door is open it's for NATO allies and uh, the applicant uh, country to decide. It's not for Russia to decide uh, which path uh, different European uh, countries uh, wants to choose. And now Sweden and uh, Finland has chosen to be a member of NATO and uh, I very much welcome that. We'll go to DPA here, please. Ansgar, the German press agency, DPA. Prime Minister, um, is Sweden open to participating in NATO's nuclear sharing arrangements and if not why is Sweden not ready to do it and a question um, to the sec gen um, are there already plans um, to have NATO bases um, a NATO perhaps a NATO headquarters in Sweden thank you well first of all Sweden when we become members today or a few days ago we embrace NATO in its in its whole 
uh, its whole capabilities. I think you normally use a 360 degree perspective in a NATO way of putting it. So we don't have any hesitations when it comes to that. We, we fully understand the need for, for all of NATO's defense capabilities, including the nuclear strategy. Uh, on the other hand, we say clearly that we see no need for Sweden to host uh, permanent bases or, or, or nuclear weapons on Swedish soil uh, peacetime. Uh, that is, a, uh, that is a, a Swedish decision that I find fully, being fully respected. It is, as uh, the Prime Minister said, it's a Swedish uh, decision. Uh, there are no plans uh, to uh, expand the uh, number of uh, countries, NATO allies, with nuclear uh, weapons. Uh, then, of course, we are constantly assessing our posture when it comes to con conventional uh, forces. Uh, but there are no plans for, uh, for instance, a battle group in Sweden, as we have in the Baltic uh, countries. Um, I think what you need to realize is that the fact that now uh, Sweden and Finland uh, are full members of the alliance um, is uh, good for the whole of NATO, but it's in particular good and important for uh, the Nordic region and the Baltic region. Uh, because we have uh, for a long time been focused on the vulnerabilities and the challenges uh, to reinforce um, our presence uh, in the Baltic region in the Baltic countries. But of course, with both Finland and Sweden into the alliance, the geography really changes because we now have uh, two important allies, then also on uh, the west side of the Baltic uh, Sea. And we are exercising, we are preparing, we will have uh, plans, uh, of course, to protect Finland and Sweden, uh, but also to uh, help uh, even uh, in a more efficient and stronger way uh, to protect uh, all the Baltic regions. But there are no plans for any permanent basis, and uh, anyway, this is a Swedish decision to be taken if that's something they will consider in the future. We'll go to the TT News Agency of Sweden here. Uh, yes, question to both of you. Uh, Russia has for many years promised to react whenever Sweden, if ever Sweden becomes a member of NATO. How worried should we now be for cyber attacks, hybrid threats, etc.? And then maybe a word in Scandinavian. Norman vinner Vasaloppet, Norman vinner Melodifestivalen, and Norman tar Sverige in i NATO, är det dags att återupprätta unionen nu? Well, uh, concerning, um, uh, concerning Russia, I think we should stay alert. Stay exactly as alert as we are. Uh, they are doing all the things you mentioned. I'm quite sure they will continue doing that. Uh, we should not be naive, and I think we are more we are more aware of the risks that they pose to us now than we have ever been before. So simply, still, stay alert. Uh, and when it comes to the um, second question, yeah, men vi har ju haft otroligt fint samarbete. Uh, det ska jag ju säga under den här perioden, men också känt ett väldigt starkt stöd också från inte bara normen i NATO utan från Norge. Jag hade samtal, första hälsningen kom från Jonas Garstöre och Alexander Stubb som gemensamt besökte NATO-övning i norra, i, i norra Norge i, i torsdags. Det tyckte jag var en fantastisk fin. Jag pratade med Sauli Ninistö på vägen hit som avgick häromdagen men som också framförde sina hälsningar. Så att jag har känt ett otroligt starkt stöd från. Och nu är vi återigen en gemensam försvarsunion i hela Norden. Of course, NATO allies always have to be prepared and we have to be uh, vigilant when it comes to potential uh, uh, Russian cyber attacks, hybrid attacks, uh, attempt to coerce uh, uh, countries in Europe. But we have seen that against both NATO allies and non-NATO allies. So the risk, for instance, for cyber attacks against Sweden uh, is nothing new. That has been a permanent risk uh, for years, uh, also when Sweden was outside uh, NATO. Um, we don't see any imminent military threat against any NATO ally, uh, partly because uh, Russia is so preoccupied with the war aggression against uh, Ukraine, but also, of course, because NATO is there. So NATO is there to make it absolutely sure that uh, any potential adversary understands that attack on one ally will trigger a response on the whole alliance. And the purpose of that is to not provoke a conflict, but to pre prevent the war, to preserve peace. And NATO has done that successfully for 75 years, even during the coldest period of the Cold War,
prevent war peace by uh, removing any room for miscalculation or misunderstanding in Moscow about our readiness to protect and defend uh, all allies. So Sweden is safer inside NATO than outside NATO. NATO is stronger with Sweden in uh, as a full ally than uh, Sweden as a close partner. So this is a good day for Sweden, a good day for NATO, and a good, a good day for security and stability across uh, Europe. Then just briefly on the last question. Also, First of all, uh, first, first of all, det er en stor dag for NATO, men ikke minst for det nordiske samarbeidet. Uh, dette er første gang siden Kalmar-unionen uh, i middelalderen, uh, 1300-tallet, der de nordiske landene har et felles forsvar. Uh, og det er en stor styrke uh, for Norden at vi kan samarbeide dypt om uh, militære kapasiteter, om å forsvare hverandre, om å samarbeide. Uh, og det er også derfor en uh, styrke for NATO. Uh, når det gjelder uh, Melodi, Grand Prix og, and og Vasaloppe, så har ikke NATO noen mening om det. Dagens Nyheter, in front of me here, please. Well, for Mr. Stoltenberg, uh, Norway's closest neighbor joining NATO. Can you be more specific? What do you expect from Sweden as member of the alliance? So I expect that Sweden will be a very committed uh, NATO ally, and, and I have all reason to believe that Sweden will be a committed uh, NATO ally, because uh, Sweden has demonstrated in so many different international organizations throughout its history that uh, Sweden is committed to multilateral international uh, cooperation. Uh, Sweden believes in the idea of allies and, and countries working together in the UN, in the EU, and now also in, uh, in NATO. I also believe that Sweden will <coughs> contribute to our collective defense, uh, partly because Sweden has high-end uh, first-class military capabilities. I have had the honor of meeting uh, Swedish soldiers, uh, uh, training in uh, Sweden. I've seen the Swedish Navy, and uh, we know uh, also the high quality of the Swedish defense industry. All of this is uh, something that Sweden then brings to the lines, and we welcome uh, that. Um, uh, let me also say that I uh, welcome the fact that Sweden has, over the last years, significantly increased defense spending. Um, so now Sweden spends more than 2% of GDP on defense. Uh, this is what we need in a more dangerous world, because Sweden, as Norway, as most NATO allies, reduced significantly defense spending after the end of the Cold War, because then tensions went down. Uh, but now when tensions are going up, we need to invest uh, again, and that's exactly what NATO allies are doing, and Sweden is now part of that, and I welcome uh, increased uh, Swedish uh, defense spending. Final question to NZZ on my far left here, please. Yes. Thank you, Secretary General. Uh, on Ukraine, uh, will Ukraine, as the potential 33rd member state, receive an invitation at the July summit, an invitation for accession negotiations? And secondly, on Taurus missiles, if we can all agree that Taurus missiles can well change the situation at the front, do you agree that Germany should transfer them as soon as possible? Thank you. <coughs> so Ukraine will become a NATO ally. Uh, the question is not if, but when. And uh, uh, Ukraine is now closer to membership than ever before. And this also demonstrates the big strategic uh, mistake President Putin made when he invaded Ukraine. Uh, because, as you remember, his purpose was to deny Ukraine to move towards uh, NATO and EU, but also he demanded that NATO should make a declaration, actually sign a treaty with Russia, uh, that there should be no further NATO enlargement with any country in Europe. And now he has gotten, uh, he, has, he, has, he, has, he has received the ex exact, uh, or the exact opposite. He wanted less NATO, he's getting more NATO, uh, more NATO military presence in the eastern part of our alliance. Finland and Sweden are full members, and Ukraine is closer to NATO membership than ever uh, before. Um, and we are continuing to move uh, Ukraine closer to NATO membership um, by ensuring that their forces are fully interoperable uh, with uh, NATO, uh, by uh, deepening our political uh, cooperation in something called the NATO-Ukraine uh, Council. Uh, and uh, and I, I welcome the strong efforts by NATO allies to help Ukraine uh, to uh, come ever uh, to, uh, come uh, even closer to uh, to NATO uh, membership. Then on the Taurus missiles, what I can say is first of all that Germany has been one of the NATO allies that has provided the most support to Ukraine, significant, substantial military support from Germany to Ukraine. 
um, advanced air defense systems, IST, um, uh, Patriots, and others, um, battle tanks, uh, the, the Leopard battle tanks, um, uh, uh, significant amounts of ammunition, and also a lot of maintenance um, uh, and repair facilities to help Ukraine develop their own uh, defense uh, industry. So Germany is really a lead nation when it comes to military support to Ukraine. Then I also welcome that uh, uh, several allies are now also delivering uh, long-range uh, uh, systems. Um, UK uh, has been delivering uh, the Storm Shadow, the cruise missiles, uh, France, uh, uh, similar uh, cruise missiles, SCALP, uh, and many allies are now uh, together in a coalition uh, helping Ukraine to train pilots, preparing them for receiving F-16s. Uh, so allies are delivering also long-range systems to help Ukraine defend themselves. You have to remember what this is. This is a war aggression of, by Russia against Ukraine, and Ukraine has enshrined in the UN Charter the right to defend themselves, and we have the right to help them to uphold the right for self-defense. But I will not go into specific uh, systems for uh, specific uh, allies. I just welcome that allies are doing more, including that uh, Germany is, uh, is providing significant support to Ukraine. That's all we have time for. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you. Okay.